Okay. My name is Hoyn. I'm a consultant psychiatrist. Hello. And I'm editor of Global Psychiatry Archives. And we have a, list, a video channel. And in this video channel, today I want to explain the toxicity of lithium. Lithium has some adverse effects. It's quite toxic. It's an ion. It uh, needs monitoring and checking of the blood levels. And up to 75% of patients treated with lithium will have some side effects. Some of the side effects are dose related, such as polyuria and polydipsia, which means excessive urine and excessive drinking due to the fact that the antidiuretic hormones are antagonized by the lithium. Weight gain can be caused by effects of the carbohydrate metabolism and or edema, which might be caused by the lack of um, the dysfunction of the kidney. Uh, cognitive problems uh, include dulling, impaired memory, poor concentration, mental slowness and confusion. Um, neurologically, you might have a tremor, um, sedation of lethargy, impaired coordination, and there might be some gastrointestinal problems such as nausea, vomiting, um, dyspepsia and diarrhea. And uh, sometimes you have hair loss, leukocytosis, acne and edema. So some of these problems uh, can be um, dealt with by reducing the dose of lithium or splitting the dosage into two. So you have half of the dosage in the morning, the other half in the evening. Or you can sometimes change the formulation. So have different um, lithium carbonate or lithium, um, other lithium uh, salts so it, uh, it can be changed um, but uh, that doesn't always help um, if the side effects persist you can use ad ad additional medications so if people have a tremor you can use a beta blocker um, if people have polyuria or polydipsia you can use um, a tyrosine or a loop diuretic um, if someone gets acne you can treat with retinol acid or antibiotics as usual. And uh, if people have gastrointestinal problems with taking lithium, they can sometimes take it um, with the meals. Or again, switching between formulations such as lithium carbonate or lithium citrate. Okay, so if people have heart problems, usually they're not too bad or they're benign. Uh, there could be T wave changes or the, uh, a specific wave in the um, ECG changes, uh, the QRS complex can be widened. Uh, sometimes people have arrhythmias and if there are new arrhythmias, then again, one has to reduce the medication. Uh, if there's major heart problems, lithium shouldn't be given at all. Right, another um, problem, and this is a very common problem, is when people take uh, lithium for years, we're not talking half a year, but you know, people sometimes take it for 10, 20 years. So then people have, uh, can have problems. And some people say between 10 and 20% of kidney problems like fibrosis, uh, which is a hardening of the kidney, the atrophy of the tubules, which uh, explain the function of the kidney and the sclerosis of the glomeruli. I can't explain the whole of the kidney function today. Maybe we can do that on another day. Anyway, um, some people, and so this is 1%, may develop irreversible renal failure. So that means the creatinine doesn't go out of the, um, doesn't go out of the bloods and increased, uh, usually after 10 or more years of treatment. And if this happens that the ure urea and creatinine uh, is not excreted as it should be, then um, one has to see, um, you know, assess the kidney function. And if people have a minor kidney function, one can continue the lithium. But on the other hand, if that's uh, a major problem, one has to balance the pros and cons of taking the medication. And only if people have very severe bipolar effects, then people sometimes insist on taking the medication. They want to keep the medication and um, think that the kidney problems is secondary. However, it's if it's getting very bad, one has to consider 
other interventions to mood stabilize. I've been talking about uh, antipsychotics and antiepileptics as mood stabilizer on other occasions. Right, hypothyroidism is usually uh, quite common between 5 and 35 percent, more in women than in men. And uh, usually it appears after one or two years of the treatment, um, sometimes associated with rapid cycling, which means that, you know, people don't have one or two episodes of bipolar. Rapid cycling means up to having four episodes of mania or depression per year, depending on if these criteria are not set in stone, but that's maybe uh, something which people have been discussing. Right, so... If hypothyroidism is a problem, this can be quite easily treated with levothyroxine. And some people take that and take it anyway, so there's no major problem. However, another side effect might be that people develop depression or rapid cycling as a consequence of uh, dysfunction of the thyroid. Yeah. Right. Um, however, this is a treatment, it's treatable. Um, the other problem is that, you know, in pregnancy, there is some risk of teratogenicity. So that means that malformations develop in the baby and there is problems with the heart and the tricuspidal valve might be affected, um, which is um, in relation to this Epstein abnormality. Anormality. And uh, this usually happens in the first trimester when the heart is developed and uh, then or late late trimester early th early second trimester so the risk is as some people said initially that 100 fold but later um 8 to 10 fold is possibly uh, a better guess um some other uh, problems might be premature delivery thyroid abnormalities uh, kidney problems diabetes insipidus which is a kidney problems so or floppy baby syndrome and the risk of abnormalities is uh, usually in an untreated control group would be two to four percent so two to four percent of all babies have abnormalities but this is increased uh, maybe doubled or tripled by people who, whose parents or whose mother mother takes lithium um, okay so there's always a way to manage this you know there must be risk between this teratogenicity and the um the taking lithium so if the bipolar disorder is not too bad and there's some stability one can try to uh, taper down and stop the um the lithium during um pregnancy or uh, before the pregnancy even um if there is a um moderate risk of relapse and the relapse is always very difficult and suicidality might be in these relapses, then it's more reasonable to reduce the um, reduce the uh, medication or at least reduce it during the uh, first or early and early um, second trimester. If it's if lithium is uh, or let's say if the bipolar disorder is very severe, uh, accompanied by uh, suicidality. Um, let's say, history of suicidality during manic or depressive episodes, then it might be reasonable to continue with the medication. Let's say in that way it doesn't help um, that the baby grows healthily without any risk and the patient uh, kills or the mother kills herself. Right, usually when uh, to prevent all these problems with lithium, um, the, there must be some, um, there is some measurement and usually the lithium should be below one millimole per liter um, levels about, and there is a very narrow um, therapeutic window. If, let's say, the lithium is doubled and um, the uh, concentration in the blood goes to two millimole per liter, then you can have uh, life-threatening side effects. So this, for that reason, the monitoring is essential. If people have toxicity, and I can remember quite a few people uh, in the hospital where I worked in Germany, they had a marked tremor, um, they had nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration and uh, lethargy. Um, they had severe complications, restlessness, muscle facilitations, so just twitching in the muscles. 
myoclonic jerks, which means um, uh, muscles, muscle jerks, um, choreatic movements, that's, you know, slow movements of the arms or legs. And they also had some, um, yeah, muscle uh, hypertonicity, which means the stiffness of the muscle. Um, the problem, which uh, which is a major problem, is this cardio cardiac arrhythmia. So the problem that the car the heart might um, to be too fast, and um, that it might even stop in uh, during these intoxications. People might have seizures, uh, be stuporous, which means you know they they can't stupor, stupor is more or less. Uh, um, induced dementia during a delirium and that people don't understand and they are let's say inducedly uh, cognitively impaired and in the severe cases people are comatose and uh, have the risk of severe neurological continuing impairment usually patients should be educated about this information and to avoid toxicity um, they should have a continuous salt intake. Sometimes if people have a high um, intake of salt, such like a pizza, then the, um, then the levels of lithium go down. So sodium and lithium um, more or less work both together in the same way in the kidney or are acted on in the same way. So if needed be, the uh, dosage has to be adjusted or in most toxic cases must be reduced and uh, especially there's a problem with overdosing so if people are severely suicidal there is a um, I'd say it's it's a big risk if people then take get lithium right um, if there's an intoxication that's a medical emergency um, that could be helped by diuresis but also, which might be helpful, is giving salt, um, giving salt, which will be then um, reduce the lithium levels. And as usual, um, what most people do that every three months lithium levels are checked and assessed, and the people have a good explanation and know when a risk starts. Usually. Um, the usual common side effects of a minor increase is usually some tremors and uh, some thirstiness and uh, these symptoms should be taken serious and should uh, be the reason to check the lithium levels. Right, okay, that's um, what I wanted to say today about lithium and the lithium intoxication and lithium toxicity. Um, I had another video previously about lithium and its effect, and you might be interested in seeing this as well. Thanks for your interest and have a nice day. Thank you.